Good morning, honey. Good morning. Good morning. Hey everyone, it's Aaron Lori with Plan Free. We've just recently arrived for what's going to be a six month stay in Mexico, Puerto Escondido. And when we arrived here, we looked at a handful of properties to get an idea of what might be available here locally. And we're going to share what we saw with you so that you don't have to run around as much as we did. And it will give you an idea of what's available here. Now, keep in mind our price point, it, it is what it is. We're comfortable at a certain amount, but we're happy to spend a little more if it gets us a little more. And this is just a smattering of a, of a price point that may or may not fit your travel desires. Maybe you're a really budget hostel kind of uh, traveler. Well, this just gives you an idea. When you hear our prices, it'll give you an idea of the range we looked in, but you can certainly go way cheaper. And then you can certainly go for the Ritz too. So it just happens to be what we discovered and we'll take you with us. All right, so we uh, found multiple different places on Airbnb and on Google Maps. Here's the first one we found. It looked like a house from the pictures. When we arrived to see it, it had a very skinny small door off of the main downtown road in, um, in El Centro is the neighborhood name, La Colonia Centro. And the main big road is called Avenida Oaxaca. So we thought, oh cool, Central, let's go check this out. And we showed up and holy smokes, motor, <laughs> bikes, scooters, dogs, cars, engines, honking. It was cool, cool to be in a downtown setting. However, for us, we work online and we were just like, hmm, noted. But anyway, so we entered the small sliver of a door and it used to be an old house with multiple rooms and they've changed them all into mini small apartments. So we'll walk you through this first one. We call this blue apartment downtown. It did have one bedroom, which means it had a door on the bedroom. And that's rare. I single that out and point that out because every place we looked at seemed to be a studio, all open to air. And if one of you sleeps in and one of you gets up early for coffee and working, you know, it's not always the best scenario. This one has a separate bedroom with the door on it. Mm. The kitchen we found as we're touring through here, fairly basic. Uh, she told us that this apartment was just newly remodeled. So they have some things in the apartment and then not other things mm -hmm. like a toilet seat. <laughs> she said she could get one. So we were <laughs> happy about that. I'm, I'm looking at maybe getting a little sofa here and trying to make it a little more livable because it was kind of small. Yeah, like Lori mentioned, she said it was brand new out of the box. And so what we're seeing pretty commonly in these suites is that they're outfitted with the very basics, but they're more than happy to chat with you about if you want uh, additional items that they'll try to get them for you. All right, as we enter the bedroom here, you can see it's simple and tidy. Looks like double or maybe a queen bed. But then it's got this door that exits onto the balcony. And normally you would think, oh man, this is awesome. But in our case, with it being right over the Central Avenue here, the hustle and bustle and buzz and energy of this um, uh, Mexican town comes right at you. And for us, you know, working on our computers and stuff and um, generally living fairly quiet, that pretty much ruled this place out for us. Whereas for you, you might love that where you open the door and you can just feel the energy from the uh, city right there. That might totally be for you. That's the reason why we showed it because there's different personalities out there that like different things. You could probably walk to everywhere uh, staying in that little blue apartment. Mm -hmm. As you enter this apartment, you can see the foyer space here. And we thought, well, if you don't mind maybe sharing it with one or two people coming and going, it does provide quite a bit of additional semi-private space where if you needed to get out of the apartment or if you wanted to do a little workout on your yoga mat, whatever, you'd have some flexibility to use that space if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. It was pretty muggy and hot in there though with no air movement. So if you're gonna be doing yoga, it would be hot yoga. The other amenity that this property had was it, you had access to a rooftop space. Now it was unfinished with rebar poking out and it was uh, fairly rustic, but it did give you the ability to sit on the rooftop, let's say in a chair and take in sunset or sunrise, look mm -hmm. out over the street and have the air uh, move across you and cool you that way. So if you, if you wanted to get outside, 
somewhere in addition to your balcony, you have that option here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one bedroom blue downtown apartment, the amenities it had, which are no brainers for us, has to have air conditioning and it has to have Wi-Fi. So we, we did connect to her Wi-Fi and we could open several pages. Um, you know, there's only so much testing you can do right in the moment. And it did have air conditioning and had it in the bedroom. And so anybody knows you close up all the windows and if you open the bedroom door, it does circulate throughout the rest of the apartment in a decent manner. Mm -hmm. So the two must haves were there at least. Right. It did have a TV, maybe it had cable. That's not our big hot button. So we didn't really check into the cable connection, but it did have a TV. Okay, so when I found this on Airbnb, the Airbnb listing said that it was 1,000 Canadian dollars, 1,273. So when I entered in our longer term dates, Airbnb gave me a kind of a long term stay price of 1,019 per month. Now this woman, we actually can't recall if she gave us a better price in person. We think she did, but it was the first one we went to look at and we actually can't remember. But you'll see as we go through the next three or four, five apartments that uh, the price in person comes way down. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering how we've lived a geographically independent lifestyle for the last 10 years, you can check out our sister channel, Plan Free Finance and Abundance, where we'll be talking about what we did money management wise to leverage into the lifestyle that we enjoy today from a perspective of a former financial planner. Okay, we went to go see um, a second downtown apartment. It was one avenue over from the main avenue, uh, but it was still, as you'll see when we walk through, there's a window right in front of the kitchen there that opens right up onto the road again. So kind of cool for the scene if you're into that, but for us, it was going to be loud. Mm -hmm. Also, we noticed this had no door on the bedroom, so it was a studio. You could, you could cartwheel from one wall to the other, so it was a little small for our tastes, um, but we still, the photos look decent on Airbnb. Oh. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, and I just realized, mm, where did it start? Where did the airplane come in? Uh, a little while ago, but uh, probably, I don't know, maybe start with the kitchen. Yeah. That's funny. Hey, reality is living in Mexico. There's an airport right there. Not very far. Whoa, it right just went there? dark in here. Right Power there. outage. <laughs> okay, whoops, it's playing. Oh, let me rewind a bit. Oh, gosh, I might just start. Go I back, think you back just talked the about the kitchen window. <sighs> okay. Okay, so we went to go see a second downtown apartment. This one looked nice on Airbnb, and we'll talk about the pricing in a minute. When we got there, it was really small. You could basically cartwheel from one end <laughs> to the other. But we still wanted to see what it provided for the price that we found. Uh, you see the window right there in front of the kitchen. It opens right up onto another road. Not the busiest road in El Centro, but close enough. The second busiest road, basically, outside of the highway. That's right. Okay, so on Airbnb, this one was listed at 913 Canadian per month. And when I entered in our longer dates, as I said before, five or six weeks long, the price came down quite a bit to $772 per month. Um, we ruled it out almost immediately upon walking in because as you can see from the photos, we couldn't even get in close enough to get a full picture of the bathroom. It was so tight in there. Um, you had to squeeze through some shelving to get into the bathroom. It just wasn't going to work. One chair where we would need two chairs to sit comfortably. On and on, it was not the spot for us, but it still shows you what 700 Canadian dollars can get you long term. When we spoke with the lady who showed us this apartment on WhatsApp later, we, look, we told her we were looking for a three month stay and she offered us 8,000 pesos per month, which comes to about 500 Canadian. So the price came way down for this one. I personally think for the right kind of traveler looking for a room with a kitchen involved uh, and it had air conditioning, 500 Canadian's kind of decent. Mm -hmm. It was too small for us um, because we work and I cook a good amount, um, but it could be good for somebody. Yeah, if you wanted to be like Lori mentioned, in the center of town, in the hustle and bustle, and you're living a lifestyle where, let's say, you'd like to be able to walk to everything, let's say your coffee, your breakfast, mm -hmm. all your meals, the beach, whatever, this location would work for you. The reasons why it didn't work for us is because we do cook in our unit quite a bit, uh, but that wasn't really the deciding factors. The deciding factors was 
were was that it was right on the second busiest road as we mentioned before and additionally you can see from the clips that there's really no usable outdoor space and because yes. the windows are small in a lot of these units that we've seen and we're going to show you the ability to go outside and get some brightness and some sunlight on you is of particular value for us and not sit on the street and get some outdoor space you want to kind of have a private secured by a gate outdoor space with some fresh air and it didn't really have that yeah and also what made our decision pretty easy on this one is we had already seen the unit that we ultimately chose to live in long term which we'll show you in an upcoming video this is plan free the channel that talks about a geographically independent lifestyle if you like what we're talking about on our videos click the like button it's free it just takes a second and it helps a lot Click subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when our next video is coming out. Number three, Hotel Nacelli. Nelly. Hotel Nelly. Nick Nelly. Okay, so this next place just sort of happened by fluke. We were actually walking to an appointment to view the next place we're going to show you. We walked by this place, stopped, started talking to the owner, and ended up uh, looking through some rooms that way. So we were able to gather some additional information for you that might help you out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the style of Hotel Nacelli was a little different. It was like about a 40 room kind of complex, two or three stories high with like a central pool area. Different from the smaller apartments we were looking at, private apartments. We thought, oh, there's a pool though, let's check it out. So they walked us through three rooms, but we're only gonna just show you one. They were really similar. Um, some rooms had aircon and some didn't. I'm sure that would change on the price. When we were at the front before walking through the rooms, he said that they rent the rooms per day, 700 pesos per day, which is 21,000 pesos per month. So that's about 1,312 Canadian dollars per month. What? For a hotel room. I mean, it has a pool and some aircon, but that was way too much. So we said, oh, okay, thanks very much. When we said we were looking to stay longer term, he said, okay, 18,000 pesos per month, which is 1,125 Canadian, still way too much for a hotel room. Anyways, we looked through the three rooms, super basic, no toilet seats. <laughs> Common theme. No chairs to sit on, just two beds and a ceiling fan. And so on the way out, we said, thank you, it won't be for us. And he offered us, um, 15,000 pesos per month, which is a little over 900 Canadian per month. Now you're getting a lot more reasonable in price, but keep in mind, it's still almost double of the unit we just showed you previously and almost double the unit that we ended up choosing. So now if you're staying here into the new year, let's say February, March, April, May kind of thing, it's going to get considerably hotter and the value of having a pool there for your use will go up significantly. So if you're still able to get that uh, room at that price and you have a pool included, yeah, I could see it as more of a, a valuable option. For us in this time of year being November, December, it wasn't really an option for us. I personally think it would never be an option for me because for almost a thousand dollars Canadian, it was a room with two beds and that was it. Right. To, for me, no kitchenette, no kitchen, no chairs. Yeah. And for 10 pesos a day, she could hire me to just pour a bucket of water on her face to simulate the pool. So, right now. so I don't think we would be renting that. One thing that we've noticed in Mexico and maybe other places as well, but we've noticed it particularly in Mexico in the previous times we've lived here and this time around. And that is you're generally going to see multi-tiered pricing on places that you're looking to stay. So when you find the place that you're interested in on Airbnb, you'll see one price. Then when you input your dates, if you're a slow traveler like us and you've got weeks or months to stay in a location, you'll see another price that's generally lower. Then if you communicate with the person that's offering the space, whether it be on WhatsApp or even better in person, you're likely to get even another lower offer. And then of course, when, if you're not interested or if you appear to be not interested and you're walking away, you'll often get another offer. So, Above and beyond all that, one thing that we haven't utilized yet, but we may in the future is you can always counter offer uh, with a price that you would like to pay and then probably a negotiation would ensue from there. So I guess 
in summary of all that, what I'm encouraging you to do is if you see a place that you think is out of your price range, maybe look into it a little bit deeper because quite often that price is going to come down, maybe even within your price range. And it's not really about bartering it to get the rock bottom uh, price and really gouge somebody. It's not really about that. It's about business transactions are win-win. So if they're saying this is what we're charging for rent, you say, well, would you accept this price? And they say, yes, I would. Well, then now you've made a private uh, arrangement when when deal for the landlord and for yourself so it's it's approach it's being respectful to whoever's showing you the property also and just asking hey would you take this lower price if I could stay long um, more longer term they'll mm -hmm. tell you yes or no yeah and the general idea here as it is with a lot of locations in the world is the longer your term or the longer you're looking to rent the lower your rental rate is going to be all right so we went to go see a fourth small boutique hotel that had about five rooms in it we start by entering the hotel in a kind of a sh small shared space with an outdoor dining table and a view over the main street, which you can see here. And then I'm talking with the lady showing us the shared kitchen space. So this would be shared amongst the five rooms. Had a really cool view, the counter space, fridge, cooking facilities, sink, pots and pans, everything would be shared with all five rooms. It was a little bit cluttered, but she was a wonderful lady and assured us that she could get a second fridge and that they were making improvements all the time. We had a really great vibe from her. Now just off of this uh, co-working space, the table and chairs, is this balcony that's kind of common. And room number one would be just to the inside of this space I'm filming here. And if room number one was available, I think we probably would have given this spot serious consideration for rental long term. But the room we found was down this long hallway that you can see now. It was room number five. This would have been okay, but it wasn't exactly a selling feature really for us. Down the long dark hallway and then into a larger room that opened up. It had two beds in it um, and I think a small table and chair in the corner. So not really a full apartment that we were looking for, but certainly a reasonable and very good sized room. The windows did open up to that balcony that wraps around completely. It was very, very hot there. The bathroom was adequate uh, and there was a rooftop area that Air will talk about. Yeah, I think this rooftop area, if you don't mind raw construction and rebar poking out, could be used. You can see here, you've, you've been able to set up a chair out there and overlook this street here. Uh, if you're interested to watch the uh, goings on, you can see Playa Zicatella there in the background. And uh, you could also probably watch sunrise and sunset from that spot uh, in addition to doing things like working out. So if you don't mind, you know, raw space, you could get out there and get some fresh air on you for sure. Okay, a little bit on prices on this one for this little boutique hotel. Uh, listed on Airbnb where I originally found it, it was listed for Canadian dollars, 1695 for a month. When I entered in my longer dates, it gave me a price of 1031 per month. So we were looking a whole lot better already. When we went to view the place in person, the lady gave us a price of 5,000 pesos per month, which is 313 Canadian dollars per month for no air conditioning and then 469 Canadian dollars with air conditioning. So I don't know if you're following that. That is 1,226 Canadian dollars per month less than what Airbnb originally listed it for. So this is just poster child case in point for getting your feet on the ground and going to see places in person. We got a Mexican peso price per month rather than a, sorry, whitey price per month on Airbnb. Right. Um. And so like you said, Laura, that's exactly why we wanted to book the original Airbnb that we show you in a previous video short term and then sort of hit the ground running, inquire with locals, see some properties that are only listed on Facebook, uh, local message boards and not Airbnb because we thought we could start to see some better pricing. And you can see drops from that high price originally all the way down to 313 Canadian or 469 with AC. You can see why we were interested. In fact, 
if it wasn't room number five all the way down that hallway, which we felt would be a long walk to the co-working spaces, because you can see from the room, you're basically just gonna be sleeping in there. If they had room number one open, which would basically be just across the hall from those co-working spaces and shared kitchen, we probably would have taken that space or we would have given it long, oh, hard yeah. consideration. Way easier to wander out with half your eyes open in the morning for your coffee rather than down the hallway. It wasn't really crazy long hallway, but it's just still, you have to leave your room. Maybe you're not even fully dressed yet. You can't quite see properly, you know, just for comfort, right? So number five property we looked at is a different configuration from the ones we've shown you already. And it was more like, uh, a cohabitating, almost hostel-like environment, surf type of hostel situation where I think there was around, I can't even remember, 16, 20 rooms, something like that, two levels of rooms. It had a rooftop terrace with some hammocks and a table and chairs set up there. So you do have an advantage of a view and a little bit of extra open air space. It also had an open air space on the main level with a kind of a long table and chairs that could seat, I don't know, 15, 15, 20 people at it, that sort of thing. Uh, for us though, you can see from the kitchen that it's fairly cluttered. The fridge here is basically jam packed. So if you got a couple like us that like to cook in the room fairly often, you're probably not gonna have enough room to store the groceries you need. And even if you are, you might have things go missing from time to time. <laughs> so for Lori and I, the shared hostel type of situation really isn't for us anymore, especially at the prices that we were looking at for a place like this. If you are the type of person that likes this kind of communal shared setup and you'd like to see us walk through more of these properties, let us know in the comments below and we'll go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so this particular surf hostel, again, I saw it originally on Airbnb, was listed for a monthly price of 2012 Canadian dollars. I entered in our four to six week time frame and it came back with a price of 905 Canadian per month, which was, I mean, less than half, which is incredible. When we viewed it in person, we were given two more prices. If we were to rent it for one month, it'd be 12,000 pesos per month, which is 750 Canadian per month. Or if we rented it for a three month term, he would give it to us for 30,000 pesos for three months, which is 10,000 pesos per month which is 625 Canadian per month. So from our original Airbnb listed price to what he offered us for a three month term, it was a difference of 1,387 Canadian dollars. Such a huge difference. This probably had to be the biggest difference. But for us, even if it was going to be 600 Canadian dollars, it was, a ho it was basically a hotel room, as you can see, private, um, private room and private bathroom, but everything else was shared and I just personally couldn't see myself. I couldn't even get one bottle of milk or something in, in the fridge and the counter. One was up to my chest and the other one, there was no space at all. So I just could not see myself preparing a meal there. Now, after all the price drops, the last price that Lori mentioned did come into the ballpark in the neighborhood of the price uh, that we received in the unit that we ended up selecting and renting in long term which you see here briefly. We'll show you guys this place in another video coming up if it's not out already. So a couple quick general points for y'all if you're looking for apartments or uh, whatever to rent, real estate to rent down in Puerto Escondido is that we find that the locals here are often quite skilled and savvy in marketing. So often you'll find very good quality photos of the place you're interested in and it'll often look fantastic. And then when you show up, you're like looking around going, is this even the same place? I'm not saying that happens all the time, but it happens quite regularly. So I think there's a huge value in going that extra little bit of effort. And if you like the picture, show up in person and just confirm what you've liked uh, from the photographs and see it yourself. In addition to the photographs, also pay attention to the wording in the descriptions because sometimes whether it be lost in translation or a little bit of um, uh, over enthusiasm in the description, sometimes you'll find a difference in what's described the apartment is having or being compared to what you actually see when you get there. So for example, we saw one earlier in the video that we mentioned and it was listed as a downtown loft, but more in reality, when we got there, it was a downtown shoebox. So you'd want to confirm again the, the description and the words used to the reality of because sometimes that can be there can be a disparity there yeah 
Agreed. Like, I don't know about you guys as viewers, but for us, we think loft, okay, big ceilings, wide open spaces. Oh, let's go check this place out. We get there and it was lower level, totally fine, but just lower level walked in and you could see all four walls right there. It just, it just wasn't, it didn't match up with what we thought loft was. So it's just so, so great. Like what Eric says to get your feet on the ground and go and meet the people. You meet great people anyway through the process, right? And, and go see for yourself. Another point we want to talk about is most of the houses, bungalows, lofts that we saw do not come with laundry facilities. But I would not fret. Um, in North America, we're just so used to having everything in one room or one you know, house. It is so inexpensive to bring a little bag of laundry and just have it done for a dollar or two or three or four. Um, and they're located everywhere. You'll find two and three on, on the same block. And they charge just inexpensive, anywhere from 18 to maybe 25 uh, pesos per kilo of laundry. They wash it, dry it, fold it, and bag it all, and you just go pick it up the next day. In our limited experience of looking at a handful of properties here in Puerto Escondido, we would offer this. If there's any savvy real estate entrepreneurs in the area or looking to uh, arrive to the area and own and rent real estate, I would say this to you. There seems to be a gap in the true one bedroom market availability of real estate. So yes. what you're gonna see is a bunch of hostels and a bunch of studios. Then you'll see larger spaces like two bedrooms, houses, uh, higher end sort of all inclusive resort rooms, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think if someone was to come in here and develop true one bedroom, that's with a closing door, so the bedroom is separate from the living area. Mm -hmm. I think someone would do really well offering spaces like this for rent in Puerto Escondido. I totally agree. If you'd like to follow along some more of our adventures of the remaining six months that we're here in Mexico, some of it being in Puerto Escondido and some of it maybe somewhere else that's yet to be determined, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the blue bell icon so you always know when our next video is coming out. As you continue to look into Puerto Escondido some more, we recommend you watch this video next. <laughs> All right.